mic coming out. Everybody have a good evening, get lots of rest, have lots of good food last night. Last night, I went to Korean barbecue. It's one of the favorite things I like doing when they come to LA. They have amazing Korean barbecue here. And I took my coworker, Tony Singer, who's had Korean food before, but never the full-on barbecue. So we go out to this barbecue dinner, and we order the nice savory meats, and they bring about 30 side plates of pickled vegetables, tofu, braised things, and Tony just like ate it up. He just went and dove in right to it. I can't explain what these foods were because I'm actually of Japanese descent. So I know that I like Korean food, but I couldn't explain what we're doing. And the thing that made the experience so great was Tony. He just loved tasting all this. He was fearless. And it was a really great experience for me. And I'm kind of feeling that in this room today. How many people are here with an open mind who want to learn and try new things from other people? Raise your hand if that's you. Looks like about 85, 90, it's getting bigger. Almost 100% of you are here to do that. Now keep your arms up if when you go back to the office, excited about this idea, are you going to get the full support, the unconditional support of your C-suite, of your IT? Oh, the hands are going down quick. The CFO? No, nah, it's, it's pretty tough. And so that's one of the things I wanted to share with you is what I call the employee engagement adoption model. And somebody mentioned that Australia's behind. They're actually ahead of this. And I have a video from Perth. I could have done a graph, and maybe you would have believed me more. But I think this video will help tell the story of how I think employee engagement works and uh, how you get adopted. So Mitch, can you hit me with that video, please? So this is you on a train in a tux. You're kind of dancing around. You're doing your talent management dance. And people are kind of looking at you. There's a CFO right there. He wants a business case, but he's not going to do anything until he, he sees that. People are starting to clap and get along. The CMO, the chief marketing officer, just got up and danced because she knows that to build a great brand, you have to have employee engagement. And they're going to be people that are kind of leaning in, tapping along. They're, going to, they're kind of going to check with each other to see if they should get up and dance. There's your IT CTO person. She's in shade. She's hiding from you. She remembers that last big IT software project you tried to do. She may never get up and dance. And so, as you can see, oh, the head of sales just got up and started dancing. And you know what? She knows that if she gets more people engaged, she's going to be able to hit her numbers because engaged salespeople are better salespeople. So more and more people get up, they're dancing because you did, and they're dancing because other people did. And that's how employee engagement starts. And more and more people jump on. Now, here's the thing. Here's this person right here. She's kind of disengaged, whatever. You can't get 100% of the people 100% of the time. The only thing you can do is try to get the most amount of people with your programs. You're never going to have 100% clients. Look, the millennials, they're dancing now too. We got it made. And you know what? They're going to be people with their arms crossed that just don't want to listen. They just don't want to do anything. And that's OK. You've at least provided the opportunity. So if I can leave you with one thought as you come back to work with all these great ideas, is that you should not, cannot, and should not shoulder the burden of employee engagement alone. It may be your job, but it is not your sole responsibility. And we've got some new data that I want to share with you that really highlights that. The first thing that we do is we do poll surveys. So we get millions of data points from employees. It's real time about what they're thinking, thinking, what they love, what they're feeling. And when I look at our most recent data, we ask the question, what do you love about your job? What gets you fired up? Is it the perks, the benefits, the ping pong tables to bring your adopted dog to work day? Well, that came in at 4%. What about strong leaders? That's important. It's important to me. But only 9% of people said that's what got them fired up. Freedom. I know many of us value autonomy, the ability to get our jobs done the way we want. That came in about 15%. Now, the other interesting thing is we all get to pretty much choose what we want to do. We, never, we don't kind of fall into positions. So we should like the work we do. And that came in with over a third of the people saying that's what got them fired up at work. But the number one thing, the number one thing that gets employees fired about, up about work is all of you. It's their colleagues, it's their peeps, it's their peers, it what drives them to be engaged. So peers are critical to employee engagement. I work with HubSpot in uh, Boston. I hire a ton of millennials. They're using peer interviewing. Managers actually don't even play a role in who gets hired. They're using peer onboarding. The employees that hire them are responsible for making sure that they're successful. And they're even using peer bonus programs. And I think this is becoming more important because of last February, 
millennials are the largest demographic in the US workforce. They're our future, and we are already starting to see their impact. Now, there's a flip side to all of this, too. If you want to know what employees, annoys employees the most, it's when a coworker doesn't follow through. I'm sure you all have been there before. I'm sure you're going to be there in about two months when you do your annual performance reviews. When people don't follow through, it makes your job harder, and it makes you frustrated. The other thing that's been happening with kind of this peer engagement model over the last couple of years is peer-to-peer -peer, uh, recognition. Traditionally, recognition has been from the top down, from management. A lot of companies have adopted peer recognition programs. So what I did is I looked at our program, and I looked at the question. We asked employees, how happy are you at work? One being not happy at all, 10 being really, really happy. When I looked at the group of people who were happiest at work, 58% of them gave peer recognition on a regular basis. You now go down to who's the least happy, only 18% did it. So clearly there's a relationship between giving recognition and your engagement at work. And that's why it's so important for you to give employees the tools to make a better work culture. Again, the burden of employee engagement can't just be on your shoulders. You need to enable people. You need to enlist people to get them involved with what you're doing. So every year, we like Gallup, we do these engagement reports, and I can predict what everybody's going to say this year. They're going to say the glass is half full, over 50% of your employees are disengaged. We've been hearing that year after year after year after year, and I'm actually kind of tired of it. I want to dig deeper into what's driving a lot of this, and so we did. And one of the things that we saw that's really emerging in addition to peers is the fact that employees are looking inward. Nearly 70% of employees don't think they're completely fulfilling their job role. They're not living up to their own personal expectations for the, what they want to do. Now, if you go back to that dance, you can't tell people to dance. Dancing has to come from, from within. You need to feel it. If you want to shake your booty, nobody's going to tell you to do that. That's something that you have to come to on your own. And I think employees are starting to think that about employee engagement. You can create the conditions for it. You can DJ some of the best music out there. But they're only going to get up on that dance floor if they feel like doing it. And they're starting to recognize that some of that responsibility is on themselves. So key three things that we're seeing, the rising importance of peers, figure out ways to enlist peers in what you're doing, the growing self-awareness and introspection of employees and the role that they play in their own personal happiness and engagement, and what I call the democratization of employee engagement. If employee engagement doesn't fit squarely on your shoulders, then you need to democratize this. You need to enlist more people to be a part of the process to own this, to build a better work culture. And that's why I call this the era of personal and peer accountability. It's not just about management. It's just not just about leadership. There are four dimensions. And we also need to figure out the role of peers. And they play this in this and the individual role that people play. So as you build out and you go back and you roll out your programs, think of how you can get other people involved. And I'll give you one quick story. When I was uh, president of White Pages a couple years ago, we were growing really quickly. And what would happen is a manager would fill out a job rec, they'd throw it over to HR and recruiting and say, go fill this seat. And it was taking forever to hire people, so I put together a little budget and I said, here's the deal, I'm gonna give each of you bu a budget and I want you to take one person out to lunch every week or to breakfast, network, get to know people, even if you don't have a position available. Because you know what? You have manager in your title. Do you know what that means? If you're a manager these days, chances are you're hiring people that know more than you do, or at least you should be, so you're not the subject matter expert anymore. You're hiring people to do all the work. So what you need to do as a manager is recruit and build great teams. Don't just throw that on recruiting to do it. You've got a vested interest. You're going you're gonna to feel it the most if somebody doesn't work out. So go out there and help recruit. And to me, that's a great example of how you democratize employee engagement. It should be everybody's job. We all need to be a part of this. Get everybody out there to get on that talent management dance floor. And thank you very much.